those who love adventure will always be drawn to the animal kingdom. Africa, a land filled with natural wonders, intense colors, and magical scents. A journey through this country is like a safari in the Garden of Eden, or the story of Noah's Ark, something it's easy to imagine at the sight of this incredible natural phenomenon. The cradle of humankind is thought to lie along the Great African Rift. This is where the present-day country of Tanzania is located. Endless plains in the shadows of mighty ancient volcanoes, guarded by proud warriors, the Maasai. It was they who once gave the most famous area of Tanzania, the Serengeti, its name. It derives from Serenket, the vast country. Maasai are probably the best known tribe of East Africa. They are feared as warriors and celebrated as cattle herders. They are a nomadic people who are believed to have immigrated from southern Sudan to modern day Kenya and Tanzania about 500 years ago. The tradition of the Maasai is based on a simple myth. When the god Enkai divided the world into heaven and earth, he gave only the Maasai cattle. Thereafter, they bred cattle and moved with them through the lands. But the ever-increasing population of Tanzania has meant their nomadic lifestyle has become increasingly hampered. The establishment of parks and reservation areas has also restricted their freedom of movement. Today, many Maasai have settled near towns. They own few cattle and dedicate themselves to the trade of jewelry, textiles, fruit and vegetables. The manufacture of jewelry and textiles has always been a tradition of the female Maasai and this is one tradition that has remained. Maasai used to travel long distances on foot, they increasingly make use of modern means of transport to get to the markets. We accompany them to one of the markets further away from the tourism hub. Here, near the town of Moshi, a daily market is set up, selling all things both exotic and necessary to equip oneself for a long safari. They come from all directions to trade here and exchange a few Tanzanian shillings and news. Equipped with all the necessities such an adventure may require, we leave the Maasai and follow their recommendation to explore the small jewel at the foot of the almost 4,600 metre high Mount Meru, the Arusha National Park. The Arusha National Park is one of the smallest in the country and it is close to the North Tanzanian safari capital Arusha. 
with altitudes ranging from 1,500 meters to the 4,566 meters of Mount Meru's summit, this unique mountain park is home to a variety of vegetation. Among the many facets of this gem are the bush savanna, with its numerous swamps in the area around the Mamela lakes. The rain and cloud forests, with their verdant Spanish moss. And the alpine moorland, cluttered with giant lobelia. This is paradise for a variety of animal species. the Mamela Lakes, surrounded by green hills, stretches out along the northeastern part of the park. There are six lakes, each glimmering in a different shade of blue or green, surrounded by the tree-lined savanna. The quiet beauty of the lakes was established about 6,000 years ago, when the last eruptions of Mount Meru gave rise to a cavity-filled landscape a haven for native and migrating water birds, flamingos and water buck. Majestic giraffes stride among grazing zebras throughout the hill area. And they are rarely alone. Large families are numerous due to the luxuriant bush vegetation and the variety of thriving acacia trees in this area. During the rainy season, this abundance of food presents itself as a true feast. And due to their mottled appearance, they're expertly camouflaged, providing apt protection against predators. We don't want to disturb this group any longer, so we carefully move on to the shadowy mountain rainforest. A magical place with unique sounds, gushing streams and forest giants wrapped by vines and moss. <laughs> Rainforest is one of the richest habitats on Earth. More animal and plant species exist here than anywhere else in the world. Over 1,000 plants, and especially tree ferns, mosses, and lichens, which wind around the giant trees, creating a breathtaking sight. The complex interplay between species keeps the rainforests alive. But the greed for tropical timber, oil deposits and gemstones endangers the rainforest more than ever. rustling canopy of leaves created by the gigantic mountain juniper trees live the curious diadem-tailed monkeys and the rare black and white colobus monkeys. With a keen eye and a little luck, you may be able to watch their acrobatic skills. They're at home in the forests of Central Africa and they're almost always found in the forest treetops. 
They live in areas ranging from Nigeria to Ethiopia and further south to Tanzania. They're true herbivores and feed mainly on young succulent leaves and buds. But they also eat the older leaves, which are often toxic to other monkeys. They have four stomach chambers, and the two upper chambers, containing special bacteria, serve as fermentation and decontamination chambers. Marveling at the fur of these beautiful animals, it's not surprising that in the first half of the 20th century, they were hunted intensively and their furs processed for fashion purposes. They were regarded as almost extinct, but thanks to the establishment of protected areas and national parks, they're still found today. Film classics like 1962's Hatari, starring John Wayne and Hardy Kruger, have contributed to African travelers increasingly replacing their large caliber guns with cameras. These sorts of films introduced the era of modern safari, and curiosity about Africa grew throughout the world. Visitors to the Hatari Lodge at the foot of Mount Meru travel back in time and follow the footsteps of the film stars to discover a precious jewel the Arusha Park. They end the day with a sundowner, overlooking the mighty volcano. From the rainforest, we're led to the channels of the rivers. At the edge of the dramatically sloping East African rift, where the origin of mankind is believed to rest, lies the 200 square meter Manyara Lake. Hemingway once praised it as the most amazing thing I've ever seen. The lake occupies more than two thirds of the entire Lake Manyara National Park, with its exact size varying according to the seasons. Waterfalls cascade into the valley from all sides of the 600-meter-high cliffs and feed the lake with cool mountain water. During the dry season from June to September, Lake Manyara is almost dried up. At the inlets above the steep wall, hundreds of marabou stork gather and the streams are marked by the massive volumes of water that flood the entire valley during the rainy season. Six hundred meters below lie the endless grassy floodplains. A bird paradise with over 400 species. Countless flamingos, pelicans and marabou stalk, a unique spectacle of nature.
One of the most beautiful protected areas in Tanzania is undoubtedly the Tarangire National Park. It is known as the Park of the Baobab Tree and owes its name to the perennial water-bearing Tarangire River. It is the lifeline of the 2,600 square kilometer national park. In the dry season, the river is a mere shadow of its former self. Yet countless animals from parched and remote areas come here as water can always be found. Surrounded by a unique savanna landscape with acacias and baobab trees, this area is home to the largest population of wildlife outside the Serengeti. Nowhere in the world do more species breed. Looking at the baobab tree more closely, one might be led to believe the legend the Maasai have told for generations, that the devil pulled up the baobab tree and replanted it with its branches face down and its roots sticking up in the air. The remarkable ability of these trees to store water enables the largest herds of elephants to survive here. They know how to make use of the trees. The elephants break down the bark of the baobab with their tusks, then use their trunks to remove the wet fibers inside the tree. They crush these to obtain the fluid. Elephants are herd animals, led by a powerful leader, the matriarch. This is usually the most experienced and oldest animal. The survival of the entire group depends on the matriarch's knowledge of water and feeding stations. Elephant bulls are rarely found in these groups, as they often leave their herds during puberty to become loners. The elephant is an animal of extremes. With a height of up to four meters, it is still the largest living land animal. And weighing nearly eight tons, it is also the heaviest surviving land mammal. An incredible 40,000 muscles allow the elephant not only to smell with its trunk, but also to use it to feel and grip. The elephant has an enormous appetite and consumes 400 kilograms of food a day. It can drink up to 200 liters of water with its trunk in about five minutes. Elephants, like humans, are conscious of themselves. They have the ability to recognize themselves in the mirror. They're highly empathetic and have the ability to act for the common good. Animals this social must communicate a lot. But contrary to popular belief, communication does not take place primarily through trumpet sounds. Elephants communicate via infrasound, deep, long-wave sounds imperceptible to the human ear. These are rarely transmitted through the air, but with the help of their trunks, can be transmitted through the earth. Within a herd of elephants, the trunk will also be used through mutual looping as a sign of love and friendship. are herbivores, not even the smallest animals have anything to fear in their vicinity. Guinea fowl often group around them. In the savanna, they usually follow groups of larger mammals, such as elephants and baboons, to catch startled insects or discarded food. The Maasai legend states that God made the wildebeest from leftovers. The head of a buffalo, the rear of an antelope, the tail of a horse, and a few delicate stripes from the zebra. They certainly wouldn't win a beauty contest.
They are, however, remarkable survivors, and population-wise, the most successful species of the African savanna. 1.6 million wildebeest still live in Southeast Africa. They almost exclusively lead a nomadic life, thereby creating one of the last great natural spectacles in the world. Millions of wildebeest, flanked by 250,000 zebra and 300,000 Thompson gazelles, make their way through the savanna, always in search of rain and fresh grass. They cover up to 3,000 kilometers per year between Tanzania and Kenya, and they have done this for thousands of years. season, the wildebeest may be found in the Serengeti. This is the only time they take a longer break on their journey. Within a short span of time, around half a million calves are born. A clever survival strategy, as their hunters cannot eat more than usual despite the abundance of young calves. The season ends in early June, and the plains begin to dry out. The wildebeest move northwards and face their next challenge, the crossing of the Grumeti and Mara rivers. Giant, famished crocodiles are already awaiting their feast. As if knowing what awaits them, the wildebeest congregate on the banks of the river and wait until the pressure of the gathering animals becomes too great and the crossing of the river is set in motion. This may take days or even weeks. The exact location is not fixed and sometimes these huge herds first move further northwards before facing the mighty reptiles. So at first, the crocodiles have to satisfy themselves with smaller pleasures. A baboon, driven by heat and thirst, comes down to the water. Knowing of the dangers, he is constantly alert and cannot quite enjoy his cool off. This time, everything went well, and from a certain height, the crocodiles no longer look as dangerous and hungry. For now, it's time to wait and deal with the little ones.
Along the riverbanks lies an animal that doesn't need to fear the crocodiles. The second largest land animal, the hippopotamus. The hippopotamus was first discovered by great adventurers along the Nile River. Today, they're no longer found in that area, but about 150,000 animals still populate the area south of the Sahara in central and southern Africa. Though they are in fact herbivores, it's understandable that at the sight of the hippo, the zebra keep their distance and prefer to wait for another opportunity to swim. There are plenty of swimming holes in the large and seemingly endless life forces of the African savanna. The gigantic Grumeti River, also known as the Crocodile River, flows hundreds of kilometers through the western part of the Serengeti until it reaches Lake Victoria. The Grumeti River carries water all year round, and along its four major branches is home to a variety of foliage eaters, like the elephant, buffalo, giraffe, and zebra. But it is the hippo who feels most comfortable here. In the so-called hippo pools, the water flows slowly, reaching temperatures of up to 35 degrees, and is deep enough to completely cover a submerged hippopotamus. But the hippo prefers sandy banks, where they can climb out at night to graze. They feed primarily on grass, and are not good swimmers. The Maasai have a legend about this. When the creator assigned a place to each animal species, the hippo begged him to be allowed to live in the cool waters because they loved it so much. God looked at them. Their mouths were so huge with big and sharp teeth. He had already assigned a monster to the waters, the crocodile. So he declined their request and said they should live in the fields and meadows. When the hippo heard this, they cried bitterly. They begged and begged until God finally gave way. But he demanded one promise of them, that if they wanted to stay in the river, they would never harm a fish. And that's why the hippo opened their mouths so wide, to prove to God that they have not broken their promise. Bizarre rock formations are a feature of the endless horizon of the Serengeti. Kopjes means small heads. They're granite rocks, rising like small stone islands from the endless sea of grass, and can be seen throughout the entire Serengeti. These are island mountains, form a natural barrier for savanna fires, and offer shelter to many small animals. But the big predators use them as perfect vantage points. From up here, they can sunbathe, relax, and watch the approaching prey.
Around 200,000 zebra live in the Serengeti. They're driven by the same ancient rhythm as the wildebeest, embarking on a thousand kilometer long pilgrimage in search of fresh pastures. Beside their annual journeys, they also take daily walks from rest areas to pastures and water holes. There are many theories about the zebra's striking stripes. They are markers of individuality, like a fingerprint. But they also serve as camouflage. When the hot air glimmers and the zebra crowd in the dry grass, their outlines begin to blur and they can hardly be distinguished, perhaps deterring an enemy's interest in attacking. of the dry season, the few water holes in the Great Plains provide welcome relief not only for the hoofed animals. The king of the jungle too spends his time there, eyeing his prey. Lions are reluctant to hunt in the middle of the day, preferring the cooler nights. Though the passing prey may be very tempting, the heat of the scorching tropical sun is just too much, and the lion's fatigue wins. Even the blue heron, only a few meters from the pack, has nothing to fear today. In contrast to other cats, lions are very sociable and enjoy large packs. Their pack consists primarily of related females and their offspring, defended by a small group of males. To satisfy the collective hunger and increase their chances of a successful kill, the lions hunt as a group. They're not particularly accomplished runners, and a single lion in open landscape often has little chance of catching sprinting prey. This group has already satisfied their hunger in the morning and seem to want to spend the rest of the day sunbathing. A peaceful sight, where the young stretch out and enjoy themselves. The Serengeti vultures, however, are always on the lookout for fresh carcasses. They're the health inspectors of the savannah eating dead animals before they pose a risk of infection to other animals. They let themselves be carried by the thermals to high altitudes, which gives them the best view of the savanna. Everything is peaceful. The zebra graze and a baboon family is searching for their vegetarian food but they're opportunistic omnivores, and their menu can include insects and even small vertebrates, up to the size of a guenon.
goes on, and it seems as if there are no dangers lurking. But then, an ostrich passes by, and suddenly halts his journey in front of an umbrella acacia. A leopard is dozing and dreaming in the treetop, and the ostrich moves away inconspicuously. Unlike the lion, the leopard is a loner and goes to all possible measures to avoid contact with other leopards. Strength and beauty are harmoniously united in the leopard. He is a graceful and lithe hunter. An almost perfect climber, he can, in contrast to other cats, even climb down a tree head first. Leopards have an extraordinarily wide range of prey, ranging from beetles to monkeys and birds to large mammals. But their main prey are antelope. Impala, however, are not only the preferred food of leopards, they're very shy savannah inhabitants, constantly on guard. To escape their predators, they can reach incredibly high speeds and perform up to nine meter long jumps. They're known above all for their impressive rebound jumps. They can catapult themselves to about three meters in the air in order to defend themselves and confuse their enemies. Serengeti, the giraffe. Julius Caesar brought the giraffe to Europe in 46 BC. In ancient Rome, it was thought that this animal, because of its size and spots, was a mixture between a camel and a leopard. They termed it giraffe camelopardalis, which translates directly as camel leopard. If you're an explorer of this lonely wilderness, you certainly want to be at one with nature. 
The traditional safari camps ensure romantic adventures under the open African sky. Situated in the heart of the bush, you can allow your soul to wander free after a day of exhilarating safari experiences. But you have to be careful, because the animals of the Serengeti do not stop at the borders of the camp. So it may happen that you find a lone buffalo grazing behind a bush, or even a whole herd. The buffalo is one of the big five, which also includes the rhinoceros, elephant, lion and leopard. They're considered the five largest and most dangerous wild animals in Africa. to a close and the setting sun turns the evening sky pink. It is time to return to the camp and enjoy an African sundowner drink, recharge your batteries and end the day. As the sun rises and the bush awakens, our tour leads us to the middle of the savanna for our great bush breakfast. In the open space, you can listen to the sounds of nature and observe animals in the immediate vicinity. A very special experience. through the southern part of the Serengeti, past huge herds and dusty trails. We're in search of the last nomadic Maasai tribes, far away from any civilization. traditional Maasai are still there and they welcome us kindly. Traditional ceremonies are an important part of Maasai culture. The best known are their vocal chants and the spring dances of young warriors, the Morani. They jump on the spot as high as possible. Oh, 
The height of their jump is a measure of strength for each warrior. The songs tell the legends and heroic deeds of dead warriors. The safari is gradually coming to an end, and after an exciting journey, we finally reach the Ark of Africa. Three million years ago, the Ngorogoro volcano stood at the same height as Kilimanjaro, but then the top collapsed and left a remarkable caldera with a diameter of 19 kilometers. Known today as the Ngorogoro Crater, It's sometimes referred to as the eighth wonder of the world, the Garden of Eden, a paradise for wildlife and a cradle of civilization. The crater is surrounded by an almost vertical 600 meter high wall and 
a fabulous mountain rainforest. Here, giant jungle trees are entwined with lichens. Beyond the giant trees and rare shrubs, the ground descends and allows for a view of the almost circular crater. Here, lush pastures and the Magadi Soda Lake feed an enormous number of animals. About 25,000 mammals are believed to live in this crater, and most of them never leave. It's like a giant zoo, with the largest predator density in Africa. Here there are wildebeest, antelope, zebra, gazelle, waterbuck and warthog. A feast for the lions, and limited scope for escape for the prey. Eaters like the zebra enjoy lush pastures all year round due to the ever-present groundwater of the crater. This is one of the reasons why so many animals live in this area. Jackals, greyhounds and hyena also live in the crater. This pack has just had offspring and now roams through the crater looking for already hunted prey. They have to stay close to lone lions or leopards to snatch the prey from them. A time and energy saver. crater encompasses a massive 300 square kilometers, which is not that much considering that all of the big five live here. The lion alone claims a territory of between 20 and 400 square kilometers. The black rhino claims up to 40 square kilometers and several hundred buffalo constantly in need of fresh pastures can form a single herd.
The Ngoro Goro crater, surrounded by the wide plains of the Serengeti, is a natural miracle. And it is well protected, thanks to today's national parks. Anyone who has had the chance to experience this unique natural spectacle will carry it in their heart forever. Tanzania is one of the most beautiful and exciting countries in the world. Vast and untamed, with a natural beauty unmatched by any other in Africa. Tanzania, Africa's Ark. <laughs>